you all know that uh, this ministry used to be a ministry of information and broadcasting. The trend in the world is that uh, people are moving towards ICT, digitalization and so forth. So, in Vision 2030, and in the National Development Plans, as well as in the Harambe Prosperity Plan. ICT is one of the issues that are highlighted there. And when we talk about ICT sectors, who are the players in that industry? The telecommunication services, broadcasting services, postal services, and then the regulator, the Communication Regulatory Authority of Namibia, CREM. The fifth NDP highlights the following chain challenge for ICT sector in Namibia, which are yet to be addressed. By the way, how many of you here have read the NDP fiber? Heads up. You see? Not even half. The humans keep on collecting dust in the shelves. How can you be an institutionalist if you have not read the National Development Plan? So, issues addressed there are that uh, we have the following challenge, lack of modern ICT infrastructure in the rural area. So in the urban centers, things are fine. During COVID, we have learned us that we are doing online and so forth. In the rural areas, they used to go to school, collect, head out, come back and so forth. They could not be online classes in the rural areas. That is because modern ICT infrastructure doesn't exist there. Lack of understanding of the relevance of ICT, which result in low resource provision and usage of available ICT capacity. So many people did not understand the importance and the relevance of ICT. Again, if I ask you, how many of you have Wi-Fi in your residences? Okay, at least many of you have. You see, when you drive around here in Iduwitu, you see, these smartphones can pick up Wi-Fi. You'll be surprised you can start from the end up, one end of the street up to the other, without picking up any Wi-Fi, meaning there are no Wi-Fi in those residential areas that you are driving. But in some countries, almost every second house, there will be a Wi-Fi. Because people realize the importance of ICT. They know that when children come from school, they need to do homework. They need to have access to ICT. But most of the people here, they depend on data. So I'm going to buy data for WhatsApp and other things. But they will not be in a position to install Wi-Fi in their places to show that that children have access. Limited internet access at public facilities in rural areas. But even in urban areas, in some places in African countries and in most of the European countries, when you walk into a mall, you have free access to the internet. In the airports, you have free 
access to internet. Here you go to our airport, no free access to the internet. You go into the mall, no free access. So that is in the urban area. Whereas now in the rural area there is nothing. In those areas there is no public access to the internet. Because even the towers sometimes do not really easily reach those rural areas. Also, insufficient electricity in the rural area. Not all places are connected to the national grid. We have areas that are still not connected to the national grid and do not even have the solar power system in place. So these are the challenges that have been identified. A low capacity and expensive telecommunications network. Those that have access to the internet sometimes it is very slow and actually it is also unaffordable to buy this data time and again becomes unaffordable and so forth. Poor quality of service, it talks, I talked about that when I said the speed is very low and so forth. Inadequate capacity, that is now human and financial resources to implement projects that may already have been formulated. High import taxes on ICT equipment and high fluctuations in exchange rates which further push the cost of imported and equipment, imported equipment higher and this impact is impacting affordability. You see, we have a base, what we call basic goods that attract low tax and we have what is considered to be luxury that attracts high taxes. Unfortunately, most of the ICT equipment fall under the category of luxury items. And I believe the finance minister really needs to have a look at this because IT is now becoming a basic necessity. Everyone will need a smartphone in order to communicate. Particularly school children need these tablets so they can no longer be Text high. Now, the higher the text, the higher the price. Because if an item costs 1,000 and uh, you tax it 20%, it becomes 1,400. If you only tax it 10%, it becomes 1,200. Now, the higher the tax, the higher the cost, the unaffordability the item becomes. And the high unit cost of rolling out in vast geographical area. You see in Namibia, particularly in the rural area, you have a special distribution of population whereby people stay from each other within a distance of two to three kilometers. And to install networks in those areas, it is quite costly. What we have done so far. We have a sound and responsive ICT legislation and regulatory framework in place. I thought we already have grant in place. We introduced the 4G long term evolution technologies. Now we are anticipating to have maybe the 5G. Just last week I was with the Minister of Digitalization uh, from South Africa. And South Africa have long implemented the 5G. And invested, we have invested heavily in the modernization and expansion of telecommunications. A number of towers have been installed in various areas, especially in the urban areas. Even if we are still lagging behind. And Namibia is connected to the, what's the West Africa cable system. We 
have done the establishment of internet exchange point, the establishment of rural ICT centers in all 14 regions to bring ICT centers closer to the weather communities. Now, if you go to all our regional offices, we have what we call ICT service centers where learners do can get access to the internet, do their homework, and all other educational stuff. We have the e-governance framework, cyber security strategy and communication plan, and the coverage in the country is 95% for a 2G, 89 3G, 79 4G, and 9G by broadband. The ministry is currently drafting and reviewing the following legislation and policies to accelerate ICT access and innovation. The Cyber Crime Bill coming, and the Data Protection Bill coming, Access to Information Bill has been passed by the National Assembly, it's now before the National Council, and amendments to the Communications Act. And we are reviewing ICT policies to consolidate all these policies into one national ICT policy. Now, fundamentals for increased innovation and access to ICTs. A question of how we can use ICTs for our people to innovate and maximize their potential. So, we are, as I told you, we are primary now to have a state of the ICT, state of the art ICT infrastructure that goes on the 5G. See, the problem with this 5G, and some of you fall into this maybe propaganda, because 5G is a technology from China. And now, the countries of the West do not want China to advance. They started spreading rumors, 5G, spreading COVID, and all these other type of things. And unfortunately, some of you I'm surprised that at your level you will believe these things. It's a pity. It's really a pity. Of all the people who were the last people I expected <laughs> to believe this propaganda. So it has been there before COVID, and other countries are having these technologies and they are advancing very well. You see, when we are telling you, these technologies are going to advance our economies. You don't want to believe. You want to believe things that you also do not have proof on when you are told these things are causing COVID. You believe them. You have never seen someone getting COVID out of 5G. You tell us the names of your great great grandfathers whom you have never met. You believe you. He was your great great grandfather. But you don't want to believe what scientists are telling you. Advancement because of 5G. Then digital literacy. We want to deepen the inclusion of ICT in school curriculum. Because we realize it is very important for learners to start at the beginning. Unlike some of us who went for the first time I, I laid my hands on the computer where it was when I was in the university. Now kids already in primary school, they want this to be included in their curriculum. And development of parallel digital literacy programs, of course, all, all these transactions people are now doing. You see, in a few years, you will be able to order your goods from ticket pay, you will pay for delivery just from the comfort of your love. You don't need to go to the shop. Of course, you can see what is in the shop. 
through your computer, then you select the items you want to buy, you pay, they are delivered. That's why digital literacy is very important, even digital literacy for e governments public service is so important. And access to the devices, because the problem is, <coughs> like last year when we were talking about this uh, online education, we realized in the rural areas, in places where there are connections, devices are not there. People don't have smartphones, and the neighbors don't have smartphones or texts. And we have this, uh, uh, what many people call a touch phones. So it is important to place these devices in many hands of people as possible. And through text regime and publishing the commission devices and collaborative procurement. And universal access service to support digital inclusion, to bridge the digital divide between urban and rural area. To save security, creating online safety for protection of human rights and sovereignty of nations. And because one thing that you should know is that uh, there are people who are involved in cyber attacks. Even our own highway uh, facility here was under attack some times. That's why they have now put measures that you can only use the highway emails when you are in Namibia or in Saturday. When you are out, you cannot. And because of these cyber attacks that are coming. Opportunities, creating multiple multi central opportunities to increase digital participation. The role of the Ministry in accelerating innovation and access to ICT. As I said, we are a multi sector development enabler in this industry, this sector. Because imagine when you develop ICT, it's still over to all other sectors. They are cross touching and play fundamental roles to enhance and of other fields. And ICT collaborates with other sectors to accelerate ICT development and use in those sectors to enhance service delivery. Working together to improve the lives of our people. What are we working on now? Digital literacy, which is requiring multi stakeholder collaboration to increase digital literacy in Namibia, basic ICT training for communities through multi purpose community centers. So when you go there to these centers, you will be able to undergo basic training just for you to know. And then don't worry, this is just a basic training. You will not write examination as you did write this English test subject. Yes, I go which left the beta test the amount of many of you. And it is not the Ministry of Education alone's responsibility when you talk about the digital literacy. It's everybody's responsibility because everybody benefits. Particularly actors such as banks and financial service providers, political parties, agribusiness, mining industry, tourism and leisure enterprises, they are equally responsible because they also all depend on ICT for them to function efficiently. Everything that we need, finance, HR, you see, those of you that are from Ontario know the problem that we have with the records of all teachers when the offices of education get paid in Ontario. Now, if ICT was in existence that time, you have a backup system. 
the nothing would happen as far as your plans are concerned with the things they cut it. Universal Access Service Fund. A rollout services through demand side management to provide access to secondary school and clinics to all underserved and unsafe areas <coughs> in Namibia. Upgrading of 122 power to 4G and the building of an additional 36 additional tower in the rural areas. Pay for the PG for the 4G routers with uncapped data to secondary and vocational schools and clinics in areas with insufficient coverage and provide a total number of 227 institutions with 4G services. Additional cyber security incidents response team, response team, that is to support the operational cyber resilience of Namibia and foster a culture of cyber awareness, serve as a focal point for coordination of response to cyber incidents that are coming up. Then the Giga project, mapping out technology advances in technology and the use of artificial intelligence allows for more accurate mapping of school locations to determine the state of school connectivity in Namibia. Financing, we talk about new global financing instruments built that can be more sophisticated than the advanced market for the peace of government. Because you know, in this world of blockchain and other things, you know, running finances through digitalization becomes very cheaper. You don't have to travel long distances, and particularly for the SMEs. Connectivity technology, that is the expansion of connectivity through low Earth orbit satellites, and mesh technologies now make building coverage easier. And in terms of availability, Giga uses new ways to transparently monitor progress and ensure service continuity. Now, opportunities we are working on national ICT summit. So, you know, from national education conference, we go to national ICT summit, where we have a youth exhibition fair market exposure, market inputs in national policy direction. And we connected Africa Girls Coding Camp at 100 girls from all 14 regions, training in graphic design, robotics, internet of things, that was teach, creation, design, thinking, computing computational thinking and soft skills. In the digital job project, that is now to try to train our youth micro work industry and promote working online with a fair and online workforce. You see, during COVID, we have this system of working from home, where many people were able in many institutions, both in the public and in the private sector, were able to carry out activities from their houses, not in offices, because of ICT, they were able to work online. And as I said, even teachers here in uh, every centers, they were working online, teaching, residing in their houses, and connecting learners to online classes. There are some of those who are not connected so that you can do other things by going to the central post and uh, do other things that uh, amount to cheating coming time. Then the 
in one hour of you to get your board, we are open to partnerships, new ideas to solve contemporary challenges. Those are the contacts for the ministry. I thank you.